Okay, welcome back. Let's finish this project. So what I have laid out is all of the pieces that are left over here from our tall scope. Uh, so we're going to get everything put together in this video. Then there's going to be one last video where I show you how to adjust the worm gears for the right ascension and declination. So we'll install them, but that second video I'll devote just to the adjustment, getting them correctly aligned. <clears throat> so let's put together the last of our pieces. Uh, we have two slow motion controllers. I can go off to the side for now. Uh, the cover for the polar alignment scope, you can just squeeze on. It should just be a friction fit there. There's a little bit of felt there that holds it in place. Okay. There's a random single screw here. And that goes in this hole here. And we're going to leave this finger tight for now because... There's going to be another video where I'm going to show you uh, how to install uh, the dual axis drive system, and that screw is used for that. So I'm not going to tighten that down. Uh, as you see, if I bring this around, I installed the two lock knobs uh, while we were off screen and adjusted them. So you want them that they can turn freely, and half a turn should be pretty well locked up. Okay. And here, uh, it's hard to tell with the worm gear off because this assembly is going to move freely without the worm. Once we put the worm gear on, it locks those two together. So the worm is actually what's being locked in this case. Uh, I don't know if you can see. So I can move it here. And if I turn it, now it won't move at all. And on the right ascension side, don't forget there was a little brass puck that goes in there first that it presses on. So put that in. Uh, down here, we have our two azimuth knobs and they just screw in. Let's just put those both on. And, and we also have our, our extra mount that I was using so we can just mount that on there. And this will just give us a nice sturdy mount to sit on while we're working on these so these can then tighten down. As well, we had the uh, altitude adjustment screws, and the short one goes in the back, right here. So I can just turn a few times. And then the long one goes here on the front. If you remember, there's a plate that goes here first. Just get in the way. So I'll mount your plate first. Nice and snug. That just goes in here. We're not going to adjust any of these yet, so just get them in position. And finally, there was two screws here that go on the saddle. The larger one and the smaller one that hold, hold the dovetail into place. And there's this plastic cover. That goes here. This is the other end of the polar axis direction, so that's just a cap that goes there. So all that we have left to do now is install the uh, worm gears. Okay? And as we said, the two housings are exactly the same. The only difference is one has an arrow and one doesn't. So with the arrow in this case is the declination worm gear, but if need be they can be swapped back and forth. They're exactly the same. So we're going to do the right ascension side first. So let's lock that a little bit. So this is a good way to balance it here so we can work, work and you can see what I'm, I'm doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and there's two long and two short screws. Okay. 
Take the two long screws first. As you see, there's grease on the worm that's on my fingers now. So just be aware, you know, keep a rag around. So these long screws go down through the housing and into these holes here. The housing just sits right like that, upside down. And we're going to just take these. Oh, let me show you something first. There's also a middle set screw here. It goes through the back side. Loosen that up. So loosen that up so it's not sticking out. Okay. Now we take our housing, put it in place, take our long screws, and we're not going to even snug them up. Just get them a few threads in so they're holding themselves in place. Okay. At this point, the worm gear should be able to spin. Depending on how this is sitting, it might try to take the axis with it. So you can see them. the axis is spinning as I work. That means at least the two the worm gear and the worm wheel are touching. Take your two short screws, and we're going to put them in these slotted holes here. Same thing, just get them a few threads in. Like I said, I'm going to show you later in the next video how to adjust this. So we just want these to be a few threads in so they're not going anywhere. These can go in quite a bit. So if you snug them up, go ahead and just back it off, you know, like one full turn afterwards. Okay. So that housing should be loose and rattly now. And if you turn the worm wheel, it should spin freely, but things are going to be very floppy, but that's fine. Okay. Now let's go to the declination side. It's exactly the same. Again, the central screw here. Take the small ones out. Take the central screw and back it off. The set screw. Okay. Declination mounts like this. So this one's a little bit harder to get into. You probably want to bring it around maybe like this. And again, thread these in just a little bit. And here's small screws, put those in. Once we're done with this, we'll have all of the parts of our mount reinstalled. Screw. Like I said, snug them up and then back them off at least one turn. You know, we want them to be very loose. Check that your worm gear spins, everything's rattling. Okay, so here we go. Our locks are loose. Our assembly spins in both directions. You can see how freely that is in this direction. Especially if you keep these screws nice and loose. And this Direction should spin with just finger pressure. There you go. So this is where we want to be at this point. Okay. So come back for the next video and I will show you how to adjust the worm gear to worm wheel backlash alignment, which is the final step. And then we'll have a video after that where I will show you how to install dual axis drive motors if you want that system. Thank you.